Yeah, it's cool. I'm I'm uh, sending the. Uh, um, Okay, cool. I think the stream is uh, live now, so I think my microphone is going out on the stream, so I have set a, a countdown now, so I will be muting. Uh, so, yeah, we will be starting very soon, uh, basically.
Okay, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, test run of this uh, Ponable race. Um, so today we will have uh, three players because uh, we have, unfortunately, we have a no-show, but also have a, a, a late uh, replacement. So uh, our participants are okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Endeavor. Uh, welcome to this. Mermus and Jay and. Uh, so they will be uh, racing to complete a Ponable challenge um, for the others. And uh, I will be commentating this together with uh, Bob from Hacking for Sordio as well. And uh, let's see, let the, uh, let's get this let's set up. See. So let the, let's get this now have set up. So we should now have players screens, players on screen. screens. On screen. So, um, uh, are all the players so here and ready? Can I? Uh, have are all the players here and ready? Life sign from you. Cool. Life sign from you. So cool. So, yep. yeah, ready. I will be uh, moving you to so the uh, other channel. Yeah, I will and, be uh, moving uh, you to the uh, you other channel. Should all have and the challenge the file and we'll do a countdown. Should all have and the challenge file and we'll do a countdown and then basically uh, we will. Uh, Start. We will. Uh, okay. Uh, Bob, are you here as well? Okay, cool. So I think, uh, yeah. Sorry, there was some some uh, echo. I did some some uh, incorrect configuration with the uh, with the audio. But I think that should be sorted now. Uh, so if if there are any, so as I said, this is a test run. It's a bit of a complicated uh, setup. So if if there are any problems while we're doing this, please uh, write in chat, and we'll try to sort it. And uh, we're doing. Uh, our best to sort this out. Uh, okay, so yes, uh, participants, uh, let's start this in five, four, three, two, one, go. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, Bob, you are the author of the challenge that they are going to uh solve could you just give like a super short um you know context of what we're doing here today and uh pop the pop the shell okay cool uh, I think, oh, you might have been muted while this explaining half of that. So yeah, basically what you said is a, a simple channel, a simple challenge, and what you said, a few bugs. Yeah, two. Two bugs that they need to string together to get this. I think uh, uh, we don't have. Uh, uh, yeah, endeavor. Yeah, so uh, just give me a moment to check. So um, while while I'm uh, checking on uh, Endeavor, uh, we can just have a look how s how Mermus is uh, starting out. I think we should have his voice on this as well while he's while we have his screen uh, showing. Those grabbing the challenge so far. Yeah, so Mermus will be using Binary Ninja for the uh, for the analysis for the reverse engineering. It's uh, cool to see it being used more and more for uh, uh, real. Mm -hmm. So 
Ida getting some competition eventually. <laughs> we hope. Uh, so we User was moved to your hey, uh, Endeavor, are you are you streaming? Okay, so this is just an exit. Uh, I should be. I'm, is it not coming through? Ah, uh, it's just a black screen. So, or it's a black screen. I got it. I didn't want him to channel anyway. Oh uh, well. Uh, yeah, I think it's a uh, short delay, so I have to wait. Yeah, this looks much more like a useful thing. Yeah, now we have your screen. Cool. So that's uh, sorted okay. out. We can uh, get on with this. Good luck. User no. was moved out of your town. Okay. Um, so. All right. So this. Can I speak? Yes. Can they? Can they hear me? They cannot hear you. We we are now live again. So the trick here is that. It's just a buffer overflow, Crap. but it overflows into the pointer that, load, that points to that um, buffer. So they're going to need to figure that out first, and then, only then can they take advantage of that second bug. Okay. So uh, I think it's going to require a little bit of dynamic analysis, uh, rather than purely static. But uh, we'll see. It looks like Mermis is getting on a little bit. Yes, yeah, so he seems to have a little bit of problem with the, getting the getting stuff to run. Uh, so, let's check on um, uh, Jay. And uh, uh, God, don't you hate that when the Anzi ends up looking like that? Yeah. So for everyone, uh, this is a beautiful Anzi art. We can see it actually uh, here on uh, Murmur screen. That's what it should should look like. Uh, but anyway, let's get back to um, Jay. So. He's starting off by uh, he's starting he's doing some of the like initial dynamic analysis, just trying out the challenge, interacting with it. Yeah, he's um, already getting a crash. Yeah. So Which is perfect. So he's discovered the second bug already. Yeah, uh, at school. So what the program does, it's it's a, a Roth 13 as a service, so it will first ask for a size and then for the data. Uh, and uh, yeah, so inputting a negative size, for example, will cause a problem, right? Yeah, malloc fails. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, so he's discovered that. That's interesting. Uh, let's see how Endeavor is doing. He's also interacting with the challenge a bit. He's going for. Um, like starting to write the, I guess a, a script to interact with the challenge uh, early. I uh, I also enjoy uh, or like I usually do that as well. Try to very early get uh, get a script up for the automation. Uh, yeah, makes it uh, a lot easier when you want to just you know try different things and don't have to manually type in stuff into your um, the uh, binary. Also really nice to do that GDP dot attach thing, you know, from Pwn Tools. Yeah, it's, uh, address, it's a nice way to, to um, um, get a, a nice, uh, having to uh, do less that's things manually and just automate the whole like, start the process, attach GDB, interact with it. So, Let's uh, yeah. Let's look here at at the uh, Mermis screen. He has also he has now got things running, I guess, and uh, he's doing some uh, pumping some memory, doing some uh, dynamic analysis as well. Yeah, uh, looks like he's dumping the stack to try to find out what's going on. And I right in the exploit. Yeah. I can I just ask the stream? Do we hear the streamers talking as well? Because I realize that I have my this might be a flaw in my uh, setup, uh, because I might be talking over them without oh, actually realizing. Nice. So uh, have to sort that out. Um, so yeah, so. Yeah, uh, if you have any any feedback from the from the from the chat, uh, any input, uh, please. Uh, um, 
Okay. Uh, anyway, let's see the what what people say about the the audio. Uh, but uh, yes, all you should hear is my. Let's radio. look at what's going on then. Uh, I think did did Jay's stream die? It's unfortunate. Maybe he's thinking. Yeah, thinking very hard. Okay, streamers are in the background, yes. Um, okay. Um, I'm trying to... Yeah, so Mermus is actually broadcasting uh, some sound. Uh, I I will ask uh, Jay to just uh, restart his. So Jay dropped out of uh, of the team speak as well. Um. Oh yeah. I'm gonna check in a minute. Okay, so so that gives me a stack address, right? Um. All right. So Mermis is just chucking a bunch of data, trying to get it to crash. Doesn't look like he's having much luck so far. Yeah, looks like um, Endeavor is doing the same thing. Uh, Jay told me that uh, his uh, uh, computer just rebooted or something, so he will be back. So that's uh, that's uh, an explanation for that, at least. Um, so if we're looking here at um, what Endeavor is doing... Um, yeah, he's, he, he's definitely on the right track right now. So let's let's talk about these uh, t two bugs that we have. So first we have this: we can cause the malloc to fail by providing an invalid size, right? Right, and we don't check the result from that call. So when we use that pointer later, um, it will be uninitialized memory on the stack. So the goal is that they use the buffer overflow to write to the pointer beneath it. And instead of jumping to higher memory, they jump to lower memory in order to control that uninitialized value. And by doing that, they'll be able to control that pointer from the memory allocator. And then they can write wherever they want. Awesome. So uh, it looks like Endeavor has figured that part out, the uninitialized part. And I'm not sure if he's crashed it with the buffer overflow yet. And it looks like Mermis is focused on the buffer overflow part. So it'll be interesting to see how it all comes together. Cool. Ooh, comments. Uh, yeah, so... Still no uh, no update from uh, Jay on on uh, how his his computer is doing. Uh, hopefully he will be back. Uh, oh, he's back on the Teamspeak now. So cool. Um, let's just check User with him. Was moved to your channel. Hey Jay, hey. are you hey. back? Are you fine? Yeah, I don't know what happened. My computer just rebooted. Uh, I'm not being. Able, I don't think I'm pushing to the stream again. It's like it's like it's starting to connect. Then it times out. Okay. Um, you need to re-enter the URL or something. No, it looks fine. Let's see if I restart this uh, thing. Oh well, uh, I'm if, as long as you're streaming, we'll we'll sort this. Uh, so uh, I will. I should have you on screen uh, very soon. Yeah, let's see if it works because it it looks like it's timing out. So. I don't know. I just like built this computer, and I haven't really like burned it in yet. So maybe there's something <laughs> unstable about it. Uh, yeah, it's like uh, it doesn't look like it's going live. It just can't access a specific channel or stream. Yeah, it's uh, unfortunate. Uh, but yeah, keep uh, keep trying. I will hopefully see when you when you come live. Uh, it should be visible, so just try that, and we'll keep this going. So, 
User was moved out of your channel. Okay. Well, mate, I guess this is why we do tests. Yeah. So, um, as uh, as we said, this is a, a test run of this concept. It's there's a lot of lot of moving parts here, and uh, yeah, we're just trying to make this uh, as enjoyable as possible. So let's check in on yeah. So while we've been talking here, um, Endeavor is now actually yeah. starting to do s uh, some more dynamic analysis putting in some breakpoints to check what's going on yeah he, he's he's pretty much got this down he's he's spotted all the right things so i guess it's just a case of getting the offsets correct and and all of that and of course there are clues uh littered throughout the the poem like there are some stack alignment things that should be weird to them and uh hopefully that should help Cool. Yeah, uh, let's check in on on uh, on Mermus. Uh, so he is still. Um, so well, he's doing some some static analysis uh, still, checking in on on this. I uh, so what part of the uh, we program? this is where it reads uh, the data from. Which is uh, yeah from yeah, the user. The buffer overflow is. What okay. do you actually? What do we actually do with this? So, so we get a character. I can see from the we read monitor that he is commenting on this. FF, we break. But I can't hear him. If it's <laughs> this is a flaw in my setup. A new line or a yeah, D, we break. But here it gets used by writing to that. Okay, yeah, it does the thing I thought it did. Uh, so this is actually ID8, in. To be honest. As long as there's yeah, not oh, here, cool. I can get D, the monitor. Which that's gonna make it tricky, I think, because stack addresses are FFs. Um, okay, what do you do? So this I assume is like the rot thirteen thing, right? So we have A's, we have oh, we have uh, we have lowercase, we have uppercase. Okay, I figured out the audio settings now, so now I can hear what he's sa saying, so that we're not talking over him, or at the same time. And Bob, you're hearing him as well, right? No. Damn. Well, yes. Okay, so he's on yours, the stream that you have muted. Oh, should I be listening to that? Uh, yeah, you will hear me double, but. Character Y. I assume this is an N. Oh, yep. So if the yes is, we continue around. This is our quick talk. Okay. Um, so. I assume what we see here then is. We did this. And if we dump our heap WX nine six nine nine. Okay, so he's... We did not actually end up on the heap. Why did we not end up with any data on the heap? Um... So, Bob, can you hear a murmur now? In this is that I heard on your stream as well. All right, mate, what? Can you hear murmurs on your no. restream? Okay. No, 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 no. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, should be but if you unmute your the VLC stream, you should hear him on the master stream. So, all right, one sec. Okay. So this is something yes. to put down in the Fair. improvement notes for next time. Um, well, let's let's check in on and okay. endeavor again. So, uh, let's. 
going on for him. So, um, I need to uh, change the size of this to see what he's doing. So, uh, he is putting down some, some notes here on the addresses that he's uh, found. And uh, yeah. um, exactly, so the uh, where the buffer on the stack is and... What's this yeah. other address? Yeah, I think he's he's understood that he's overwriting into the pointer uh, that's just beyond that buffer. Uh, but I guess he's just sort of making the template for now. Yep. Yeah, so people uh, were asking in the chat about releasing the challenges afterwards. Uh, we will definitely be doing that, uh, no problem. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, so he's here setting up like the um, like a template uh, interaction script here to try these things out. Uh, still unsure how much. I mean, it it looked like he had found uh, stuff, but um, he's uh, seemed yeah, to have halted a little bit in the progress here. Yeah, I guess. It's just a bit weird when you overwrite into the pointer that points to the buffer. Do you know what I mean? It's like a little unstable unless you can only take the least significant byte. So uh, it looks like he's just playing around with that for now. Yeah. That's cool. Alright, so now he's going to run it in GDB. And let's see what happens. Uh, I guess he needs R, yeah. Oh yeah, and he's uh, using this... Uh, what was that? Yeah, so he's using this... Uh, uh, so to a FIFO, right? To do the input in, in directly yeah. from GDB. Right. Um, which is... I mean, I think it's an okay way to do it, but uh, um, I, I nowadays I prefer just uh, starting GDB from from pwn tools and interact it. Uh, yeah, that's that's way better usually, but I still do this myself, so can't can't knock it. So yeah, so what's going on? He's um, He's inputting a large size, and then... Yeah, so he's just trying to overwrite something, right? Get some sort of reaction. But the thing is, because that point is just beyond that buffer, as soon as he touches the least significant byte, he's going to jump somewhere. It's not going to be a contiguous flow of memory. And, and once he figures that out, I think it's game over. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. So, um, just a, a short re recap. We are, um, we were initially uh, planning on having four uh, participants. One person uh, unfortunately couldn't, uh, didn't show up, and Jay is having some technical uh, difficulties. But he will hopefully be back very soon. Uh, let's check in on uh, Mermus again. It looks mm -hmm. like he's doing some interesting stuff here. So EAX should be that. Uh, we have a saved EIP at this print this minus AX. If we print out, if we dump 88 bytes, it'll overwrite our return address. But this function is not going to return, so that doesn't help us, does it? Because this is eventually going to call exit. Um, what else is on the stack? Um, hmm. Some frustration from Mermus. 
I feel like I'm being dumb here and there's some trick. Um, so there's like 40 bytes there, 40 hex bytes. I yeah, can it's put just bytes a little weird. It. Once you get over uh, that, that first hiccup, it's they're plain sailing. Copy in. I'm just glad they didn't pwn it in 15 seconds, to be honest. Interesting. Um... So. What happens if I do. Yes. Many, many bytes. Where does my response come from? Oh, we actually print out that. Um, Okay, Bob, so oh, that's what a stack address. If we look here at what Mermis is doing, um, isn't it a stack address? What would what what would be the uh, exploit like what uh, is he is he is he going in the right direction here? Like uh, yeah, yeah, he's definitely spotted both bugs, and he's going to try to figure out how to take advantage of both of them. But I think the only thing he doesn't get so far is, is that you can't stably, because we're right into that buffer one byte at a time, there's no way that you can take that pointer just below the buffer all at once. So you're only ever going to take that least significant byte, and uh, I guess that's the part he's figuring out now. Okay, cool. Let's uh, and compare it was compared to what's going on on over on Endeavor's screen. Um, well, that's what we like to see, right? Lots of forty ones in a row. <laughs> yeah. It's. Uh, I mean, so we still. It's going to be interesting to see. Oh, yeah. Uh, I wonder who's who's going to be the first one to to get the. Um, are we, are IP we supposed control? to stay impartial? I mean, yeah. it's 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 always nice with a you know like kind of some kind of underdog story or whatever. All so right. I mean, you, right, we can totally be partial. Okay, because I'm leaning towards Endeavor for sure. Okay, that's cool. He was just he had he had both bugs in no time, and uh, it looks like he's examining the stack frame, the uninitialized memory right now. So I guess it's just a matter of time. But Mermis obviously could land us any second. Yeah, it sounds like. Uh, I mean, I, I I haven't tried out the challenge uh, myself, but uh, uh, feels like one of these situations where you can very quickly go from, you know. You find the two bugs. You have a difficulty really understanding how they're linked together, and suddenly you have IP control. Exactly, exactly. It's just a little tricky to write to a future stack frame because we're just so used to overwriting things that are currently in use. Yeah. So that's the trick: jump backwards, not forwards. Yeah, so it looks like he's watching it right bite by bite right now. That's cool. Watch, watching as it takes that least significant bite of the pointer. Yeah, uh, so uh, uh, Bob, I'm just handing over the commentary a bit to you here now. I'm going to try to s help Jay uh, figure out what's, what's wrong. So... Uh, Please on. keep talking. <laughs> Alright, so Endeavors seems to be stepping through. Got the breakpoint right where it writes the byte. And he's just figured out you can only take the least significant byte. So 
the right now, that pointer that he's controlling is pointing before the buffer, which is the trick. So it looks like he's got all the pieces. Yeah, so. Yeah. And then when they get uh, uh, IP control, it's. They can do it with just a, a one shot gadget, right? So it shouldn't be a. Yep, yep. And they can also get some parameter control if they want to call something like system or something. That's cool. All right, I'm not sure what's going on with Mermis. Seems to be hitting the pieces together as well. Yeah, let's... Uh... And of course the binary was stripped, that? so that's a bit of a pain in the ass to navigate. Not calling GDB dot attach. Interesting. B one six four five six. FF B one. So we're in some. We are in a stack. Um, what happens, Jay? I. Uh... I think we have figured it out, so we, he will, should be coming online. Okay, so Any where moment. were we? So we got some yes, CTF. we have Jay. FF, awesome. Yay. All right, game is on. Yeah. So uh, Jay, you are back online as well. Cool. So um, Jay, you are back online. So uh, oh, cool. Thanks. Let's yeah, let's I, check I, in I saw on, it's actually on streaming, him where so. how far he he got. Um, Got to get back to our. Uh, nice to see he's using Ida. So let's just say that. Back yeah, to our Iron hacking. Iron Ninja's good. Ida is great, obviously as well. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, so we're gonna crash. Right, we're gonna he's got a uh, All this uh, good, and there's some some movement on his screen as well, so we actually know that it, it is working. Okay, cool. We have out, three players. So we'll just uh, um, yeah. go here. All right. So he is. Mm. I'm not sure how much he's figured out. Yeah, okay. Seems to understand. Do some little bit of reversing. A uh, little bit. Maybe this guy get input. Yeah, so we oh. got a we got a, a suggestion here from from one of the um viewers to so here as okay. is a stack now here let's go on people fix that talking guy. over each other oh yeah 64 okay so now we should have jay's microphone on stream as well if he's talking um not saying too much uh, at the moment though definitely got to figure these little hiccups yeah but i mean yeah that's why we're doing this test run so what i was saying was that we got the suggestion to get like a recap of um what's the status status of exit i don't think it's a number of let's I go see. and fix these things up that's oh shit we're now. hearing both of theirs okay i'm gonna because that is yeah okay so the problem here is that even even when when doing uh, the split screen view we're broadcasting all of their voices at the same time, so I need to make sh find a way to have different uh, mix uh, audio mix settings depending on the scene. It's uh, so another thing to check. Uh, so now I muted them for now. But anyway, what I was saying was we got a uh, suggestion to do like a recap on on where they are at at, at regular uh, intervals. So, as we said, um, both Mermus and Endeavor have definitely found both bugs. 
Seems like it, yeah. And uh, yeah, Jay is unfortunately a bit behind due to um, some technical issues. But he does have hex rays, so maybe that gives him a little advantage. Yeah. We'll 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 see if it's, if it's enough to to catch up. And then uh, when you actually find find the bugs, how fast can you connect the dots? I mean, Endeavor is basically just figuring out what he can write once he takes that pointer. And once he pits the two pieces together, it's pretty much done. I'm not sure about Miramis. Uh It looks like he might still be doing a bit of the same, but doing the static version. Yeah. So... As we said, Jay is just starting out, so let's let's hear if what, what's his status. Error code or a new line. Then, if the last character was a new line, it null terminates. Here makes a new buffer of the size you specify, and um, if I had to guess, this is going to be uh, some ROT13 kind of stuff. This is probably like a stack cookie right here. So the first thing I kind of see that might be bad is uh, so this is 64 and this is 72 and it's going to just uh, continuously read like if you see size is not used anywhere it just continuously reads onto the stack. So he's on to the um, the overflow part here, getting yeah, to it. Yeah, it looks like he's figured that part out. And that, that size parameter will also control the size for the memory allocator. That's the key thing to, to spot. Mm, mem set it back. Okay, so looking here again at the uh, Endeavor then, uh, so now it looks like he's just trying things wildly in GDB. Um, yeah, so I think what's going on here is he understands what he's doing precisely, but this, this binary is a little weird compared to the normal ones, which is that we're doing some dynamic stack alignment at runtime. And so he doesn't really need to worry about the the randomness of the stack as much um, so I think he's, he's I'm not sure if he realizes that yet because he's working in GDB which obviously disables randomization by default but if he pits those pieces together I think he, he's got it yeah so, so he's writing some input seeing how it works in the app looking for that crash yeah so honing ain't easy mate no it's lots uh... of GDB <laughs> yeah that's also um, uh, one thing that you can do if you're gonna run this binary a lot of times and have it run to the end to to get rid of that uh, sleep thing at the end to just uh, optimize your workflow. Um, yeah, hundred percent. So, either patching it or um, hooking the it. LD preload, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's another nice thing. Well, uh, yeah, looks like he. So, 
what is he doing? He's trying a bunch of different uh, uh, lengths of stuff to see what's yeah, happening, see. right? Right. Uh, so I think he sees a bunch of stuff on the stack, and he's just looking for the thing that sort of, you know, causes everything to explode. Yeah. But it's going to have to be a little more precise than that. That's cool. Well, let's check back on Mermis then. All right. Alignment. Alignment, indeed. So we're in 40 bytes. Uh, yeah. Then we're going to modify the low byte of the next place we're going to write to. So I can easily change any one byte in that. Um, so... By, uh, by the way, Bob, did you fix it that you hear him on, on stream? Um, yeah. Cool. And he's got the exact idea right now. For 8AF6, run one. His uh, terminal is too small. He's uh, destroying your beautiful ANSI art. So. Yeah, I'm used to it, to be honest. <laughs> After looking at Endeavor's screen. If I do. <laughs> No one respects the ANSI. Yeah, it's uh... So if we look at his uh, exploit uh, script here, he's, he's just sending uh, a size of one then, and then just some this padding. This is not going to work, is it? Uh, yeah, it looks like he's just trying to take advantage because that's of going the to, buffer so that of the flow. low byte, but it doesn't change so the... maybe skip ahead of the stack cookie and that's overwrite not something. Not but that's not going to work here. So eventually, you'll only have one option, which is to take advantage of the memory allocator uninitialized crash. That if he's found it, that. which I, so I, I think he did earlier, but I don't know if he noticed it properly. Bytes. That's cool. This tells me this. This is. But he has the idea address. for sure. Okay, so let's see if um, Jay it's is managing to uh, catch up. I'm gonna. Oh, uh, sorry for. Uh, of course, they're not gonna scroll back anymore. So yeah, here J screen. To my, I need to get uh, I need to get like uh, keyboard mappings for all of this uh, uh, switching back and forth between stuff. So yeah, J is working quite manually here in the in the terminal uh, as well instead of uh, instead of putting it in the, in the script. And uh, I think uh, might cost him some time. It might, yeah. Uh, I'm guilty of doing this as well, uh, but then again, I'm pretty slow, so <laughs> probably not the best strategy. So, what's this uh, tracing thing that he is... Uh, yeah, I didn't really see what he was doing that, and I didn't see what all that output was about, but it was a lot of details around the crash, I guess. Um, uh, what was that? D message or something? Yeah, I think so. I I never seen people use that for like for that purpose. Um, I don't it's know. It's really it's really handy on some CTF challenges when you it's a blind challenge or something, and they're running two challenges on the same server. What you do is you take your initial shell from the easier challenge, and then you know, just see if you're getting crash information from D message. So it's it's a great technique. Oh yeah, so like uh, leaking information due to the fact that they are both running on the same server. Right, absolutely. Cool. And war games as well, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cheating in war games is, uh, you know, like cheating in solitaire or yeah you know what's interesting someone just brought this up is that nobody's using 
you know, differential sequences or something to where the, you know, the A's will sort of change, you know, like... Oh, a, like a, a De, De Bruggen uh, right. sequence. Yeah. Yep. It's, it's an interesting point because obviously it does save time if you see that register that you control or, or whatever. Yep. Totally. So if we look here at, uh, at Jay, he, he has got it to crash a bit. From what? Uh, I mean, there was a, a crash previously, but it doesn't really look like he has a solid grasp of, of the bugs yet. So still a bit behind. Uh, yeah, but then again, it's one of those situations where you might see one bug and just sort of run at it but the best thing would be to understand the application as a whole to take advantage of everything that's there. Yep. So it, it uh, might pay off. Let's try to actually look back the cookie. I will tell, obviously. First, uh... Gotta love hex rays though, right? Yeah. It's so powerful. Okay. So, over to Mermus. Um, he... S written quite some exploit code, so this like does he have something going on or I mean as I said I, I haven't run through the challenge myself but this is starting to look a bit like your example uh, exploit. Yeah, yeah pretty much he, he I think he's using the exploit as well seven. you know to just sort of get it to deterministic way to sort of do okay. dynamic analysis mm -hmm. so you can see he's attaching Four. to the process as he, as he's running yes. that exploit uh what's interesting is he doesn't use that pwn tools feature to attach he's killed might save a little time but yeah he, he's pretty much got it down uh i still don't think he's writing to the right place and you can see that first send line he's only sending one so never going to see the uninitialized value so uh, a question here from one of the viewers if we could explain why a de Bruggen sequence would be helpful so instead of putting like a long sequence of A's and looking where you get yeah, like right. a 41 41 41 right. in your you know wherever uh, if you put in a de Bruggen, uh sequence I am not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly I doubt it um, you can immediately see what part of your input was uh, placed where uh, due to the nature of how those are constructed. So you can, uh, if you get multiple, if you're writing to, for example, multiple registers, you can see exactly which four bytes uh, ended up in which uh, register, which is then very useful uh, to know like how long your paddings should be and where in your exploit you should put your, uh, like the actual data that's interesting. And then, of course, in Pwn Tools, you can just use cyclic underscore find, and you can find the number immediately. Exactly. So you generate the sequence with cyclic and then the length, and yeah. uh, and then you take the output back from that and put into cyclic find, and it will give you the the index of where in the sequence that those four bytes uh, are appearing, which Absolutely. will then immediately give you the correct uh, offset. So it's a uh, a very nice way instead of trying like uh, four A's, eight A's, twelve A's, and so on, which is like the the old way of doing it. Right, great, great time saver. And we've modified six. All right, so uh, Mermis gets it. Right. He understands that part. So he just needs to put together the memory allocator part. And I think he's going to get stuck on this bit because where's he going to write? Hmm. He, everything above the area where he is that's on lower memory a address it is for the future, so it doesn't control anything now. So what am I just and this function this? will never return. Yeah. I see here that uh, Jay has at least found a crash, so let's check in on, on him. Uh, see if... Uh, He's um, got a grasp of the right. bugs yet. Oh, interesting. What's he doing? It looks like he's trying to overflow the get char bit. Okay, 
let's see. Yeah, so we also got a question about uh, if fussing would be useless here, and uh, I think it won't, like, just dumb fussing won't really help you that much because finding the bugs here are actually quite easy. Uh, when I tried this, when I started this challenge for the first time when, while testing it out, the first thing I did was to cause the crash. Yeah, exactly. You found one of the bugs right away. Uh, yeah, you could just dumb fuzz this by yourself. It's not. It's not like the bugs are hidden, but um, uh, it, you, the fact that you have to link them together that's going to be the issue. So, uh, fuzzing's not really going to help there. No, possibly like something more intelligent, like uh, symbolic execution or you know something like that. But the question is. How difficult is 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 it to set that up versus just analyzing by hand? It's a quite uh, small right. binary, right? But you know, if you're good with Manticore or or Agar or something, maybe. Yeah. So let's see if Jay is commenting on this uh, anything. So uh, sounds quite focused right now. Yeah, that's an annoying pa part about your your ANSI art when you turn on like. Uh, debug mode or whatever in in uh yeah so pwn tools you get a shit ton of output <laughs> it's always smaller than the the page that the kernel reads so you know what am i gonna do mate i need to i need to look at something pretty while i pwn uh this is where i need to make a little notepad and keep track of what we're doing so we got what is he doing? Exactly. I don't know. This is one of those moments where you just know that he's better right, than you. Right, so is right. he gonna find some unintended? Try this a few times. So okay, okay. He's uh, he's attempting to do something completely unintended, and if he pulls it off, I will shut up and then shoot myself. <laughs> Please don't do that. But. Uh, <laughs> But let, let's let's uh, let's look at this plan then. So leak stack cookie overwrite return address. Uh, right. Is this feasible? Uh, Leaking the stack cookie is feasible for sure, but the return address he shouldn't get to, because there is an at exit call before he gets there. Ah, uh, so he he might override it, but it doesn't matter. Right. And and none of the exit handlers are going to be called either. So. It, it should be a dead end in theory, but what do I know? Cool. So Jay is going down the wrong rabbit hole, uh, unfortunately. We'll see how that turns out. Uh, and meanwhile, uh, uh, Endeavor says in, in chat that he's so stuck. Uh, yeah, let's so, um, look at that. Kind of want to try this test of assumptions. How does this work? Do right we do? Is, is hints a thing? I I mean, the purpose of this is like entertainment and education, right? So right. Uh, I think uh, we can we can probably let it go for uh, you know a while more, but then we can maybe check into the players, maybe get them in in this channel and just uh, um, you know hear what their what their take on this is, like an uh, interview while while in the middle of this. Um, it's it's good to, for people to see that even really clever and skilled people get stuck. Yeah. Not me though. <laughs> no, you you never get stuck. No. <laughs> um. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and 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 ever seems pretty stuck. Not not that much is going on. Uh, I this is torturous because he has both bugs. Yeah. Just uh, that last little bit, you know. Yeah. Uh, this was my my fear when you uh, when you described the challenge. Like it's it's simple, but it's unorthodox. So, you know, will they will they manage it? Pwn life, mate. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's check back on Mermis then. Let's see if he's stuck. Okay, well, that works, which is good. Um, okay, something works, that's good. What do we actually want to do? So we can control the pointer we're going to write to, but we can only modify one yeah. of the bytes. And, and, and he um, understands it doesn't return, so he's got that part down. 
So what do you because do? Because of how it works, we don't what actually do end do? up getting to um, do a whole bunch. So how would we mess with this mallet, right? So this lets us mess with the stack all we want, but nothing after us is going to get used because we're going to exit. I think that's true. Yeah, so he, he's got the exit part. Um, yeah, he's on to it. Yeah, so um, I guess I don't know. Do do we have any reason? What would be a reasonable hint to give to them I mean, in this the situation thing, when yeah, they? So both Endeavor and, and, and Mermus have found the bugs, uh, uh. but I'm not sure how how well they understand this fact that they need to go you know they need to be considering the future stack frame instead of the previous stack frame right but if they just like for for example if Mermis just uh messed with that first set line, at the end of the stack then it's okay. going to crash um, for a reason right so he would just figure out how to take advantage of that um i don't know look mate it's up to you yeah but he, he, I mean, he has all the parts. That's the thing. So, yep. Um. Well, uh, yep. So we have a comment from Joel in the chat that we should not give any hints, and I, uh, I mean, I can dig that sentiment. Uh, so I was hoping for there was that I might get lucky. Yeah, but he's hardcore, like, isn't he? <laughs> it, it don't work out that way. You know what I mean? Like, he's really good. So okay, so we get to I do that. Know. Maybe um, she can take advice from want, someone like that. Which is unfortunate. Um, All right, it looks like people don't want hints, so no hints. <laughs> Live or die by the pwn. Yep. Yeah. And every I mean, hints is a little weak, isn't it? These guys were all good. Change this thing. We're going to end up having to reset it, aren't we? Okay, is some of this other stuff getting saved anywhere useful? So we do this malik after we do it. Um, we've got this, which is just passing the stack. <laughs> so and this is passing the actual number of bytes. So Live Overflow just suggested uh, a blue shell for the Ponable race and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, it, um, and just in case anyone hasn't played Mario Kart, well, that's the reference. Um, okay, so so because of how they're doing it, Jay is bringing out Google. <laughs> Always uh, one of the most po powerful uh, hacking tools, in my yeah, opinion. Great, great for people to see. You know how it's really done. Yeah. We're, like none of us has this all in our heads. Yeah. So maybe you can explain what what you think that he is thinking right now. But this, uh, you know, th this is like libc internal stuff, right? With the c type b lock. I've actually never seen that. What is it? Yeah, these are the functions to do quick tests for uh, is something alphanumeric or just numeric, a digit, etc., etc. So is lnum and all of those sort of functions. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But they're all like extremely optimized, so it has all these confusing names. So here it's looking for AND 400. This is nothing important, but he's looking. That's the important part. <laughs> okay, so he is, he is deep down in, in irrelevant stuff. Right. Yeah, that's unfortunate. And here's uh, everybody seeing that I'm bad at math. Bit <laughs> control character. 
Yeah, so he's basically reverse engineering the structure of the ASCII encoding right now, uh, unintentionally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, which, which is, is a, not going to... It's not helpful, not right. but no. it's just one of those things you have to do sometimes. Yeah, and I think this also shows that, you know, all these things that you accidentally learn while, while doing these things. Like, yeah, now I know exactly how uh, surprisingly well thought out the ASCII table is. But you can see what's leading him to this conclusion. He's just seeing, you know, a, a pointer and then maybe some sort of an offset and maybe it's user controlled. So he just looking for, for anything, basically. Yeah, but that's not gonna. But this is just your rot thirteen function, basically, right? Yeah, yeah, and I try to make it a little more convoluted than it needed to be. <laughs> you. <laughs> well, we we should have like a hotkeys for these gifs and get these um, that's bait thing up. Um, from um, uh, that's from Mad Max, right? Yeah. Um, okay. Well. Uh, I want to see some some IP control action soon. It's, that's uh, it would be awesome yeah, to see two players get it close to each other, so you yeah. would have a bit of like a hectic finish. Yeah, that's the unfortunate thing about Endeavor is he was closest up front, but he seems to be stuck. Yep. And now Murmus obviously has all the parts, but can't see what to do with it. Yep painful yeah we should add, add uh, so what i wanted to do but i didn't have time for the stream was you see these like a b c d uh at the, at the bottom of this uh, screen i wanted to have like a, some kind of like progress or checklist thing so that we can have like on screen keeping track of uh the progress of each uh, player but uh, yeah so I haven't well in endeavor would be at c but i think that he's on a <laughs> Yeah. And Mermis would be B going to C. Yep. So well, they give hints. Ah, he's checking. What? He's checking the. He's checking the YouTube chat. So. Uh, uh, gotcha. Has this like pop out uh, window for the for the YouTube chat? Uh, well, I think he should be looking less at the YouTube chat and. You know more at the pawn, but maybe that's just me. Um, so the crap just happened. So B B. So yeah, this is the problem. Where when I switch to the split screen, I get the audio from all of them, and if I unmute them in one of the single screens, I unmute them in the split screen view as well. So that's uh, one for the to-do list. Uh, but. Uh, yeah, let's let's check in with uh, uh, Mermis again. Um, Six five three eight two. Yes, continue that. We get six seg V. Trying to write to EAX. Yes, yes. Okay. So yeah, that lets us modify any single byte in this. I don't think we can modify more than that, because modifying more than that is going to make us jump around. And there's no other pointers I immediately see in this area. So... <laughs> okay, so first of all, it looks like he, he's got a hang of this, the fact that he can only overwrite this, uh, this single byte, right? Uh, also, a comment from uh, Matthias in the chat with um, a nice uh, "quote unquote" easy challenge, Bob, you monster. <laughs> when, so we're gonna do the yeah, I'm used to it. Car. We read it in and then we write to it. It's just so painful to watch them. Like it's just like guys, just try shit. What can I do? Yeah, well, I, I'll tell them that if if they if they like 
if they feel too stuck, we could set where a, at the time where we, when we would be giving out some kind of uh, hint to keep a, so a bit of action to this. Um, yeah, but you, it, it, the hint's up to you, mate. No, I mean, I mean, uh, I think I don't even know what I would say. No, to be honest. Uh, but something about looking into the the future stack frame. Yeah, yeah. Would that make sense to them? Uh, to Mermis, it would. <laughs> Okay. But yeah, yeah, I think that would be the one. Yeah. Or uh, just something that makes them look at the Malak core. Yeah. Yeah, someone commented that CTFing while being watched by 100 people must be pretty hard. Uh, yeah. Um, it's like being on stage live hacking. Right. Well, you know, you live by the sword, you die by the sword. Yep. And yeah, so there's, uh, no, there's no judgment, but obviously all these guys are good. Um, but I think you can't expect, a, a, you know, someone to pwn this shit in five minutes. No, that's... Uh, I think that's very fair to say. Um, and... Uh, uh, oh yeah, so we got a uh, got a suggestion from Live Overflow and idea for how to deliver hints. Uh, share with them an input that does something, so that they have to analyze what that input does and maybe helps progress. Oh, so, perfect. like a like a partial exploit or something. Or a minus one. Yeah, exactly. That's it. That's all they need. Yeah. Um, so and another question uh so the, the the also got the question if the player even wants hints i don't know maybe not uh, i'm gonna check in with them so it's i mean i i really want them to to finish this in in some reasonable time we haven't really you know set a, a strict time limit on this and uh, we don't want it to drag out for like five hours so i mean we're we're not rushing anything yet um right yeah um but we also got a question what's this uh so let's let's do uh just a, a recap of uh what the hell we're doing here so we have these three people jay mermus and endeavor who are racing to compete uh, to complete this uh, pwnable challenge um so they all have the same challenge and they're trying to beat it uh, as fast as possible while we are commenting on their progress and they are also or at least jay and mermus are at least uh, commenting on their own uh, progress and uh, yeah the purpose of this is entertainment and education and schadenfreude well yeah that Apparently. as well it's uh so okay what's jay up to yeah, I was just about to ask myself the same thing. Let's unmute. Yeah, his he's mic. figured that. Yeah, he's getting a consistent crash because he's providing a size minus one. Obviously, gets cast into an unsigned integer. It's just f f f f f. So it's just too large. The Malik call will fail, which means that in future it will just use an uninitialized part of that stack to write something to, and it's obviously an unwritable address. So he, he's got the first bug down. Yeah. Which is the, the same bug that the others seem to not be focusing on. Oh yeah, that's interesting. So they have kind of, assuming that Jay realizes the importance, importance of this, they have kind of, you know, two thirds of the puzzle each or something. Yeah, exactly. But that's the tricky bit, isn't it? Yeah. So to realize that you're supposed to join them together. Yep. This is just cruel to so see that beautiful Anzi art oh. droid. <laughs> yeah, so also got a question in chat uh, if Gynophage isn't playing, if we could enlarge Endeavor's screen to fit. Uh, the problem is that I cannot do that without ruining his uh, aspect ratio. Uh, and. 
but I can actually, you know, we can actually rearrange this slightly to get rid of his taskbar and make his screen a little bit larger because we're not really interested in what he has in his dock. Something like that for the split screen, yeah, so if we switch over this should look much better, or a little bit better at least. Uh, cool. Uh, so we're also going to comment that most of the time it works pretty damn well as an unintended red herring if you've never seen it before. Yeah, that was the, uh, uh, with regards to the C type thing, I guess, uh, which is, yeah, it looks, uh, looks really funky, but actually has no real importance. Yeah, exactly. Uh, looking here at Jay again, um, he's looking at this, uh, the mem set call. So when is that? Uh, uh, so after the first run, the buffer is cleared out, I believe. And so you can get a leak the first time you run it, but not the second. So the mem set's just there to, to clear it out. Because we're, the, what the program does is you get like it, you can do this three times or something, or you can do it an unli unlimited number of times. Uh, yeah, th th this one's unlimited. Yeah. You're thinking of the other one. Oh yeah, that's the uh, the backup challenge. So we right. we prepared this challenge and or well we uh, Bob prepared this challenge and we and in case they would just slaughter it, uh, we had a a back backup challenge. I don't think that will be necessary. Uh, yeah, I think, I think we'll so we'll save that for uh, hopefully next episode, assuming people uh, enjoy this stuff. Uh, so yeah, please keep the uh, uh, feedback coming in the chat. I'm trying to, to read it and, and we have some obvious things to sort for if we're doing this again. And uh, if anyone is interested in, in participating, well, that's also uh, good to know. Uh, so, what's going on with Jay right now? Then he is—he's uh, figuring out what he can do with the buffer overflow. Obviously, again, you see that second last line, the second column in the second last line. Yep. that's the pointer. Yep. So he can just take the least significant byte of that pointer, and I think he's just figuring that out now. So as his sixty-one touches there. It will just jump to whatever, you know, that 61 is on the on the stack, which is probably forward or backwards. And when does that happen? Where 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 does that happen? Uh, that's when it reads your input, obviously. Yeah. yeah. So it asks you for size and then the data, and when it, that data uh, we probably need uh, to is in a loop, first. obviously. So that's where that happens. Uh, Okay, yeah, so the, the the pointer pointing to the current byte that we're writing to. Yeah, is what so you have a big buffer right underneath the pointer to that right position in the buffer. Right. So it overwrites itself. A it's, it's a bit weird, but it's nothing too tricky. Should have crashed, though. Yeah, let's listen into what Jay is saying about this. Um, he had some comments. <laughs> you can see the frustration in the <laughs> in the long GDB uh, updates. I'm going to go take a quick uh, cough break. I'll be back in a few minutes. Wow. Okay. So uh, Jay took a quick break. Not sure that will help him catch up. Uh, but, or maybe it will. You know, sometimes you need that oh, leg yeah. stretcher and some fresh air. Um, so let's check in with Mermis again. Uh, I'm going to unmute him. So we we have had no. pretty much consistent over 100 viewers in this so far. So this uh, at least some kind of interest in this. That's cool. Specifically, it's a percent C. Oh, yeah. So like you're famous. Come back around here. If it's less than zero, we're going to skip over some of this. Otherwise, we're going to 
get car. We take this pointer, we take this byte, save it off here. If it's a new line, we skip over this. If we come in here, what are we doing? We take this byte. I think it's just buffering stuff, right? We come in here. I'm going to call printf for size. We then read it in. What exactly is that format specifier? Is there something dumb about how that format specifier works? Oh, so he's investigating if you can um, make the printf function okay. behave like if we can replace the the format string. So we have a percent. Yes, yeah, I don't think that's gonna work. That's not what I want at all. Maybe. It should be uh, non writable memory though. C yeah, I mean, I was thinking the same thing. It's like it should. Star. Um. Yeah, another no, comment from the chat. I think this is pretty cool. Would love to see more live CTF competition. Uh, thank you. We think this is pretty cool as well, and we hope you're enjoying it. And uh, so. Mermis is now checking the so because the the function that reads in your data it just reads one byte at a time with the printf percent c right? Uh, no, it's just get car. The width is not specified in the format string, but it's in okay. But where is the printf? Oh, that's is that when it's printing out stuff or? Argument that has uh, to be yeah. Formatted. Okay. I think the risk. Oh right, the it's the crap? so at the end of each round it asks you if you want to continue, yes or no. At that point, it does a scan if so we push and just reads thing. one character, but trims white space. Ah, okay, yeah. Oh wait, what? Oh right, that's the size. So he's reading the size right there it, when it asks you for the size. Yep. And what? Oh, and that notation is just to discard the. Is that yeah, how you discard a new line? Or? Yeah, exactly. Any white space or, mm. or rubbish after. Okay, cool. Oh, I'm sorry. This is printf. I wanted scanf. Yeah. So basically, he's trying to get this. It is to be read from the stream, but ignored. Okay. Yeah, he's definitely down the road. So wrong it's going to just now. dump out the rest of it. But yeah. this is the game, right? You have to explore every opportunity. Reading that. I still think they stuck on the idea of it just being one bug. Which is what we did here. Oh. Yep. Oh, how did I miss this? Uh, if it's oh. above. Forty-eight. We go over here. If it's below forty-eight. We go in here. Okay. Yeah. So what's happening here then, Bob? This I branch. Don't think I that. And, um, yeah, I don't think it matters. This too much, is but where it's asking that. him for the data. It's greater than forty-eight. So it's uh, it's it's real like quick. It's less than forty-eight. It, it asks you for the size that it'll do a memory allocation of. Yep. For the output, then it asks you for your input data. Then it will print, you know, do the magic rot thirteen. So we have this and, right, um, but I don't and then it will know print the output with it. So like we have a he's just sort of dancing right, between right, these three one of places the where some input is read. Um. We only copy it. <laughs> Harsh comment from uh, the chat. He's figuring out what the so percent star C in the scanf does, i.e., wasting time. Uh, <laughs> well, that's one way to see it. Uh, you could also see that he is uh, eliminating possibilities. Right, right. Uh, or he's wasting time. 
What do I do? Yeah, what do you do, Mermis? What do you do? Um. Okay, so we have uh, a lot of scrolling going on over at Endeavor's place. Um, and just when we check in, he's he's uh, stopped. He. So where is he looking right now? Uh, it looks like he's looking in the BSS section. Yeah. Uh, right. So obviously. Wait. Yeah. So that's really much useless. Yep. Okay, now he's looking at the global offset table. Which is not as useless. Yeah, so... Uh, um. Not a lot of progress. This is this is the interesting thing, right? Because I mean, especially Endeavor, but also Mermaids, they had they had the bugs very early, right? Yep. And then uh, I think just w we're all sort of uh, after playing so many CTF challenges, we're all we're all trained to just sort of you know you're right after the buffer. Yep. But. If you just sort of drop that notion here, it just all falls into place. Yeah. And they can write before the buffer, which is a powerful primitive. Yep. But also, like the idea of. Uh, um, I mean, th there aren't that, that many challenges, I feel, uh, which uses, like, initialized memory as a part of the. Uh, part of the bug. Um, yeah, I guess not. But it it exists. It's yeah, a bug. I mean, yeah, I, I I mean, we all we all know it's a bug. Uh, it's. Uh, you know. I think we we're so used to using it just for leaking. Yeah. That's. It's uh, probably. Oh, so there's a lot of movement, so I'm hoping this means he's onto something, but I can't see what it might be. Nope. Um, I wonder if he's supposed to be talking. I uh, I'm, I'm just gonna check that with him. So I'm I'm gonna bring him in in this in the Teamspeak channel. User was moved to your channel. So, uh, Endeavor, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Hey, I was just checking. Are you supposed to be streaming your microphone on stream? Uh, no, I okay. can. No, I, 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 I'm just checking that uh, everything is working as intended. It's completely up to you. I was just uh, double-checking that. Uh, is, uh, is, are other people still going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're going. Uh, I would say you're still in some kind of lead. Uh, wow, that's very surprising to me because <laughs> I feel like I'm floundering over here. Yeah. Um, so we... Um, uh, yeah, we, we we're commenting on what you're doing, and and we are uh, uh, enjoying what we see. But uh, of course, we can feel your frustration as well. So, uh, but uh, good luck and uh, uh, keep going. So, so all right, thanks. <laughs> I guess I'll talk to you later. Yeah, okay, I'll turn my microphone on just so I can do that. Well, I mean, I think it's I think it provides value. So, uh, please do if you can. User was moved out of your channel. So we'll see if we'll suddenly get some sound from um, um, Endeavor. Yeah, he is. Is this, uh, is this microphone? Yeah. Yes, we can now hear you, Endeavor, on can stream. Can be heard on the stream now? Yes, you can is be heard this, on the stream. Uh, I don't know if this is working. But if someone tells me this is working, then. Uh, yeah, is that it too? Can you hear my microphone on my stream? And I'll sort of explain where I am. User was moved to your channel. I don't know if you heard me, but we can hear you. Maybe, maybe 
yes, we can now hear you at Endeavor on stream. User okay, was so moved out of your channel. All right, so I think. But I can hear you. Ooh, wait, who can hear me? Wait, so I can say it. I can talk, and no, none of the other contestants are going to hear me, right? Is that fair? Mm -hmm. oh, you heard me, but we can hear you. Okay, so basically, here, so tell everyone where I'm at. So we got a one byte. Uh, we can write over the least significant byte of a pointer on the stack. That's basically going to allow us to point somewhere else in the stack. We could also use that to overwrite any one byte in that pointer. Uh, so if we go back here, blah, 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 blah. So he, yeah, he, he salted this. Pointer stack buff, but yeah, he's got it. We're going to be able to, to set any one byte in that arbitrarily anywhere we want. But what we really want is we want to be able to do something like overwrites a table in the global uh, value in the global offset table, or whatever else. And Libsy was given with this challenge, which means that probably that's very important. It means that we're probably going to have to redirect something into the in a Libsy. That's my guess. So general idea here is we need to be able to adjust this uh, stack pointer to either give us another layer of indirection, so maybe we can overwrite another pointer on this stack that will allow us to overwrite something else, or just go straight to libc. I don't think we can go straight to libc. I also don't know what all these functions are right here. So we got some, uh, I don't know what you call these, uh, essentially just predicates that are going to allow this code down yeah, here never to be reached, but that code obviously is a little interesting because we have these branches to edx. I almost feel like this was dropped in here maybe to allow for some sort of gadgets to be in place. I don't really understand why the challenge authors dropped these two functions in here. I don't know if they are here to distract and to pull people away from what they should be paying attention to. Um, they look a little different, the two of them, but it's just it's just weirdness in here. So um, I, I'm probably, because I don't have any uh, pointers back to these, probably not going to pay these too much attention. Uh, yeah, all right, I'm done talking. I'm going to go back to just quietly and silently being sad and reversing these <laughs> stuff. Oh, yeah, so you, you heard that, Bob? There's some weirdne weirdness in here. <laughs> How do you feel about that? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't know what those functions are, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly wasn't intentional. Uh, I don't know. So, uh, so we can also change the size. So we could uh, overwrite the size value on the stack in size. Um, yeah. Yeah, let's uh, switch over to Jay, who is now starting to write some automation. Um, so instead of doing things manually through the debugger or terminal or uh, whatever, is actually putting this together with pwn tools. So it's interesting to see here uh, the uh, regarding tooling. So we see that um, Mermus and Endeavor are using Binary Ninja, and Jay is using uh, Ida. Um, all of them are using pwn tools i don't i don't i don't really know what you would what else you would even consider at that in that area right it's got to be pwn tools or raw you know yeah <coughs> what's interesting is nobody's using uh pwn debug or PETA or something like that yeah but i i saw some colorful output on someone's screen previously but oh maybe, yeah okay i don't know uh, maybe that was something else. Um, so he's looking to set up the, yeah, the the debugging part, right? Yeah. Of the pwn tools right. checking. So yeah, if you haven't used that before, it's a really good thing to to look at. Uh, like gdb dot attach or yeah, something. Yeah, you can do both. Uh, debug or attach depending on if you want to st uh, start the process or attach to right. an existing uh, process 
Um, yeah, so Joel said that someone was using Ponybug uh, here in the chat, so yeah. Um, well, yeah, let's uh, let, let him... What do you use? I use, I use Ponybug. I used to use a PETA or PETA right. or whatever. I have a friend whose name is uh, PETA, PETA, by the way. It's a... Surname file. It's a name from uh, Croatia, actually. Okay. Uh, just a curious fact. Uh, anyway, I used to use that, but I now I use uh, uh, Ponybug. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a good one. Yeah. I mean, it is kind of like some kind of like a, a greatest hits collection of all these different tools. And I use none of them. I just love the pretty output. Yeah. So, well, if we let Jay, um, you know, read the documentation uh, on his own and check in with Mermis again. Let's see what level of level of frustration uh, we have here. Okay, let's do the dumb thing here real quick. So he's now overwriting the lower byte with a with a null byte, then, right? Okay, so that worked just fine. So what I was checking there was that there's not really any un uninitialized variables there. Right. So what what he's doing is perfect if he was sending some different size. Yeah, because he is sending... Well, I guess we can do this, too. Just one. Yeah, exactly. So, the second half of his exploit is good. But he should be sending a size that causes the allocation to fail. Absolutely. I hate computers. They're the worst. We should just stop it's now. so sad to see because he is so close. Yeah. And he, he has no idea. Yeah. And he's not even, you know. Okay. He's just that that size is is in cement forever. He's not even playing with it. No, exactly. It's like he's he's moved past that. He's, right. And think like this this is the bug, but. Yeah. So I'm thinking that maybe we should just tell them the fact that there are there are two bugs that you have to consider. All right. I mean, I that's your call. Fine. Yeah. Well, let's do that. Um, so, yeah. So uh, we'll be dropping just a tiny hint right now. So listen up. And it's just the fact that there are two bugs in the binary that you have to consider. Good luck. Keep on fighting. You're awesome. Interesting. So there's a second one that I don't know about. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so he didn't seem to, like, judging from the reaction there, it okay. didn't... Okay, so it is actually in this rot 13 function, isn't it? Uh, no, I sent him down the wrong <laughs> path. So what is this thing actually doing? Read it in, we do stuff, we do stuff. Um, this is incrementing around, V34 yeah. was... Let's check in with Jay since he's back at analyzing the binary. Is. So, deep thought and silence. Yeah, I 
I'm not sure what's going on with Jay. Uh, as I recall, he did lock onto some of the stuff earlier, but I'm not sure what progress he's made since then. Let's do the. It does seem to be the, focused uh... on the size part. Yep. Good. Stack address first. And he did get that early crash, so I think he's going back down that road. Yeah. So and at this does... point, everyone has triggered the size bug, right? Oh yeah, absolutely, but they just, you know, when you see memory allocator, you just think heap, and, you know, they just don't see what they could do on the heap. Yeah. It's definitely stack-based, though. Alright, what's happening there? Seems to be playing with the size a little. So I was just called Sita Red Herring 2 in the chat, and uh, I think that's an unfair label, as I'm only telling the truth. Um, yeah. It was a shitty hint, though. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but you know, like, better to give, do it in increments, instead of like just, you know, giving the whole thing away yeah, fair at, play. at once. It is a race after all. Yeah. Like, we want to see, see some, some action, some, you know. Drama. Some drama. Well, yeah, I don't know, maybe our, our community has a, a lot of, like, enough of that at the moment <laughs> anyway. So, this is just, you know, this is fun. But it's a competition. Jay is definitely onto that point, so right after the buffer. Yep. So that means that all the players has at least some grasp of of that part. And yeah, what absolutely. What they're missing is the. Uh, the size thing, the malloc, the failed malloc. Right. And the interesting thing is, is that's the easiest crash to get. Yeah, I mean, as I said, like, the, the literally, the first time I started the binary, I put in a minus one. Right. Uh, but, you, the, I mean, the difficult part is not triggering it, the difficult part is understanding how it relates to the other stuff. Exactly. So, let's check with uh, Endeavor again. Um, so, he seems to be a bit AFK, actually. Man, I really hope. He's not. He's talking. He's working. So what is he doing right now? He. I have no clue. No. Need... I see the buffer is partially written to, but not enough no. to control that pointer. Mm. But you can just feel he's putting the pieces together. Yeah. So. Yeah, we have some dynamic analysis going on uh, with Jay, so running this, Ooh. running th this through the debugger several times. Um, I can't really see what he has written with the blue on black text there, but uh, he has some some kind of uh, skeleton for the exploit script going. Um, yeah, it looks promising. Yeah. What is he doing? Is he leaking? Oh, I think he might be so attempting to back. use the leak. Sorry for all the... So obviously, terminal the buffer is Maybe not cleared out the first time you use it. So whatever yeah, is on the stack will, uh, is there when you write your string. And if you session. do not provide a new line at the end of that string, and no null no terminator will be placed there. It's easier to follow along. So keep the script open on one side and then pull this one up over here. 
<clears throat> yeah, so the leak you you need So let's let's uh let's do a recap of this like what what's the what the game plan they should be looking at. So they fail the malloc and then they can use this overflow to overwrite the pointer to the current thing that they're writing to right. use that to change the uh the uh, uninitial un initial initialized uh pointer right so there's a a buffer then the pointer directly after yeah you write through the buffer to alter its own pointer then sort of jump before the buffer and that area will be the area used for a future stack allocation uh, future stack frame. Yep. So if they make that memory allocator call fail, that's where the points is going to be. And so. that's where the 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 rot function is writing the result, or yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. So you you essentially just have uh, two functions deep. Cool. Does that mean that your payload has to be rot? No, uh, well, yeah, yeah, but if you're using non-alphanumeric characters, then no. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but... So, depends what they target. If you're targeting something on the stack, that's very likely. But if you're going for the global offset that's table, then uh, you're probably not going to be in that range. That's cool. So yeah, we still have them, you know, completely disregarding the length uh, here. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Even after the hint. But it's like you said, like it's sitting up there, you know, with the, you know, startup stuff. That right. you're basically saying that I'm this is this is just a template. I'm not going to touch this. Yeah, set here. in stone. This is Malik fine. FF. Nothing to see here. Yeah. yeah. This now we're at zero. It's just so this is cruel because Murmurs with that input that he has right there. Yeah. If he just changed that one to a minus one, yeah. he would be in the money. Yeah. Okay. So he's like one yeah. character yeah. from getting it. Yeah. But exactly. eight, nine, eight, five. Oh, it's torture. Eight, nine, eight, five. There's a certain cruelty that comes yes. along with making challenges. You have to be a bit of a bastard. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know, we all know that we have the right guy for that. <laughs> so. You okay. Can someone just p please put in a negative size? I know, it's just like, mate, what are you doing? Just one character. One bloody character. Yeah. Oh, we got a thumbs down on the stream. How cruel. Oh. Wow. Not a fan. Yeah. Was that Mermis? <laughs> plus eight. How? Yeah. We got 48 thumbs up though, so uh, it's uh, it's fine. That's a good ratio. Yeah. So EVP plus eight is this, which is arg one. So let's listen to what he's saying here. Arg two, arg three. We'll break on a null byte, right? Seems like people are at least still, you know, going on with 
good spirits, so yep. we, st we still have a still have a show on our hands Seems here. Not. Because EAX is way the fuck off. Okay. We're in this whatchamaduber. Oh, he's down in this C type stuff again. That's uh, not gonna help. Yeah. So. Yeah, so we are we are coming in towards the uh, two hour uh, mark. So, uh, uh, I'm wondering, like, what what do people think? So, people, uh, okay. we can just the check. check. People in the chat, are you still uh, get this still twice, alive and like watching? The first time um, through it worked fine. The second time through it failed. So I'm doing it that way because I just don't want to do the work. Um, Six five five three three. And we see here that. Uh, okay, we have EAX. Mermis is doing the important thing of setting uh, Intel syntax for the disassembly. And EAX has a pointer in it. We now read EVP minus 33C into EAX, which is okay. So we have these FFFEs. Oh, because we actually ran back over our own buffer. Huh. Um. So let's switch over to Jay. He seems like he's implementing his own uh, rot13 function. Does that mean that he has found yeah, something? Yeah, he might be trying to encode the pointer uh, for later. I'm not sure if he has the, the correct thing yet. Yeah, so this might be just like thinking ahead. Uh, yeah, that's smart for sure. Yeah. So I mean, it doesn't hurt because this is like strictly speaking, it's it's a good way of doing this that it, because you will not have to care um, about what data you're putting in. Let's right. See exactly. Close on to and it it, it is an issue that came up when I was making the exploit. So yeah, it's, it's a good approach. Yeah. Well, <sighs> what's interesting though is all of these guys are good, obviously, but yeah. it still always comes down to that thing of persistence. Like that's really the one thing you you want. You know, when you're looking at uh, you know assembler or whatever, you just you just need to keep pushing, and so it's interesting to see uh, these guys do exactly that. Yeah, keeping it up because. Um... Yeah, and I think I, I've, I've said this previously. Oh, there we go. Oh, let's wait. At least it didn't mess it up and make it a, a Unicode string for some reason. Okay, so Jay is leaking stuff here. Yeah, that might be it. Wait, let's... Yeah. Yeah, he's definitely leaking something. Uh, so that is a back address. I'm not sure what why that's useful. But of course there's all sorts of nonsense there. There's libc addresses, stack addresses. Yeah. Well, let's see, it's it's partial relro, so you could you could overwrite the uh, the got Hundred uh. percent. Yeah, that's exactly what my uh, reference exploit does. Oh yeah. Okay. So this is. So if we uh, overwrite this with the valid stack address, and then this with something that's not zeros. 
uh, this function will um, right it looks like Jay is looking for things to override to and now he's in the other function this could be promising the future function yeah this is one of those times where dynamic analysis would just get him there so much quicker yeah now you see that on line 36 there where the 36 is it says if output buffer then v13 equals output buffer yep that's the thing you should be concentrating on yep so if that output buffer variable as he named it is a zero then he's in uninitialized stack yep and of course uh, malloc will return a zero when it fails Yeah, so we have a comment from, from Joel that should uh, release the binary. We could actually do that, I guess. Yeah, do it. Yeah. Do it. Go, go I'll ahead. just send the same link. Uh, I guess... Um, I'll just remove so the... Uh, about that um, hint we got from Jorgen the server. That there's yeah. two bugs. Right. Um, I kind of assume that one is the controlled size and like all the stack stuff is like kind of red herring. Watch him really go resolve be, uh, this in two minutes. Um, Malik, like, size of zero. Kind of right, because it populates whatever we said into the buffer. So yeah, for, for people uh, watching, I've posted uh, a Dropbox link in the chat with the binary and the uh, relevant libc so you can follow along I mean I know that Joel likes karaoke so think of it as like poning karaoke for or something <laughs> I don't know <laughs> that was bad um, uh, anyways we have the binary there I uh, left out oh, the remote. apparently these guys got the link earlier from a, a wget that Mermis did so that's quite clever oh he was doing that on stream okay yeah. cool got love hackers <laughs> yeah uh, that's cool <sighs> so close in here so far by the way, this is exactly how I approach every CTF challenge. I basically just fuck about for around about two hours too long, and then uh, usually get the flag at the last minute. So I, I have a little bit of empathy here. Yeah. No, I mean, you can totally... I, I remember uh, doing this. So um, Mermus hosted this community challenge. Uh, so I was live streaming his thing for five hours i think and i didn't even solve it that was painful yeah it's a cool game that we play um but i'm 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 really hoping that these guys will not need five hours for this i don't think they will i mean they're so close as we're saying they are close and since you're in the habit of giving hints i know you're not going to let it get to that Oh no, we will be not. We will not be sitting here for five hours. Uh, I yeah. don't think uh, really anyone uh, would enjoy that. Actually, so yeah, we're just coming up on the two hours now. So, as I said, like the point of this is uh, education and entertainment. Uh, not, I mean, a little bit of uh, Schadenfreude, but. Uh, it's not pretty to see how the sausage is made sometimes. <laughs> Word. And, yeah. It's a good format, it just needs to be tweaked a little bit, obviously. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, you want to, you know, I think a quicker form would be nice, perhaps. But it's so far, so good. Yeah, let's check in with... Uh... Okay, why is that happening? Good question, Mermus. Good question. So, 
Well, he's still messing around with the um, with that overflow, which is, I mean, it's it's good, it's correct, but it's not enough. Yeah, he just got. A, if he would just what is play happening? around with the size one time, he would have this in yeah. minutes. Yes. Uh, someone said that we need we should get the uh, Toby one to commentate this, who is a, a Dota uh, caster, by the way. I mean, don't you think we are enough? Like, aren't we on, <laughs> on that level? Professional commentators? I'm uh, deeply offended. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> Is it like that uh, the dog uh, picture? The yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, that's my entire life, mate. <laughs> that's cool. Now we get the comment that we we are great. Thank you very much. We <laughs> yeah, my ego can handle it. I'm alright. Yeah, I, I'm 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 not too fragile either. So why didn't this ever get written to? Oh, yeah, comment that he's changing the size. Yeah, did I just look away f from the screen for a moment? Too much. Oh boy. Where am I? Uh. Uh. All right. We'll wait for him yeah. to be in the exploit. So I think if if one of the players get it, then I think it's appropriate to release another hint. Yeah. Fair enough. I don't want like a long tail of like two people being done and then one people struggling for another hour. That's that's yeah. not really going to be fun because then I mean we've all already seen it being solved and just that's just dragging it out. So I think yeah, it's absolutely. a good moment. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm curious. I want to see his. Uh, okay. So we're. Yeah. So he's definitely in the right area. He's. Interesting. Yeah. That's why that's. He's got it. Okay. Oh, he's now doing it another lap. So now he's sending. You see, like his script continues with a yes and and another uh, and, a, and a minus one, right? I didn't see the script, but that could work. So the last. The last few lines of his exploit was um, a Y. Oh, so he's trying to overwrite the size. Ah, right. So okay. we do actually yeah, have to that. do that. Because otherwise it's going to become. Wait, no, you can't do that. Or can I actually just do. Yeah, the size won't be relevant until oh. the memory. Yeah, that's not going to work. But he's in the right space. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. Okay, so we've successfully jumped over that. But well, that's the if statement, right? Where it checks if the pointer is right so and he now he said that he's successfully jumped over that so he's figured out that he he's taking the right branch then yeah exactly so interesting yes i'm not this, quite sure how this happened but i'll i'll go with it so this is definitely moving in the right direction then yeah, absolutely, and you can tell because his typing got more and more furious. <laughs> we should have uh, an APM uh, counter uh, on. on oh, yeah. Like as it gets to red, you know they're closer. Yeah. Okay. Uh, checking on the others. Um, so. 
Endeavor is putting on some music, getting getting the right vibe. Probably gonna switch away before I get some kind of YouTube uh, copyright claim on that. <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna right, find gee. those three seconds of copyrighted music in my two hour stream and kill me ruin your life yeah yeah well let's look at jay he is uh well the size is wrong obviously yep okay so the thing is right so mermis's approach is to overwrite the size with the buffer but that's too late mostly because it's the points that matters yeah so, so the I mean, he could, so it's just a waste of time. Like, he could just feed in the minus one. He doesn't need to override it as minus one. It's it's not going to be enough. But he's definitely on the right track. Whereas Jay uh, seemed to be focusing on the right areas, but he's still not altering that size. Yep. It's just static, just, just like Mermis was before. Yep. So it's just one of those things where it's like once he figures it out, you're going to see him moving really, really quickly. Uh, what is he looking at? Was that a cheat sheet? This is a buffer overflow basic exploits. From right, so it's like a template. Pwn tools tutorial. Yeah, so he's messing around with something, uh, something about uh, some pwn tool stuff, I guess. Uh, so so far, Mermis is uh, potentially seconds away. Right. Yep. He's controlled yep. the size, he can make it fail. Yep. Uh, so, so uh, yeah, I guess he's going to be closest. So here we have all three of them um, currently playing. Um, and yeah, as I said, so the, the idea no. is... Uh, that was a good sound from Mermus. Let's switch to oh, his screen. Oh, seg fault. Beautiful. That was Mermus who said that, right? I wasn't listening. I heard a. I heard an ooh. Now he's deleting a whole bunch of stuff, putting the minus one in again. Let's see. This is this is interesting. Okay. I know that there's an easier way to do this. So. Yeah, so this could, this so could be threes? it, right? Yeah, potentially. So you can see what part of his oh, buffer like is making a crash. Yeah. Uh, obviously, it would probably be quicker with cyclic, the point tools function. Yeah. But you know, as we say, like whatever gets you the flag gets you the flag, right? So. Absolutely. Oh, well, they're like two. They're two sides to that right like during a competition that's like undeniably true but ideally you want to develop your skills as well to like find new and better ways of doing it yeah so did he i i just blinked there for a second did he actually see oh yeah there he has yeah so. that is where the points would be so yeah, we should we should follow this really closely now because we could have an IP control uh, 
uh, any moment right now. We're getting some feedback here that we could have uh, hints on a, like a regular, like a scheduled basis. I think that's a really good idea because then we don't leave it up right. to some Wonder kind of uh, very hard Random call is. judgment. Instead, we'll just say that, this. and then we can actually have well thought out hints uh, right. beforehand. We can have a list of them. And we say like every half an hour or every one hour, 45 minutes, whatever, just set something. And we could even do like the first one after one hour and then every 30 minutes. You could also do something like that. I think that's... Yeah, perfect. Keep the pace up. So sort of yeah. yeah. Sounds like a good idea. So yeah, I, as I was about to say, let's see if I can finish this sentence now before Mermus uh, points this, uh, was that the idea is to... This is a test run. We're trying this Why out, trying the format, that? see if people enjoy it. We will, we will appreciate all the feedback from you, and hopefully we will do this again uh, with other participants. So uh, all kinds of feedback. If you are interested in participating or uh, contributing a challenge, uh, possibly, um, that's much appreciated. Oh, just it. Absolutely. So just... Uh, reach out i mean i mean you can write in chat here but you can also like uh, write to me on on twitter or uh wherever i think most of my communication channels should be easy to find and open so uh we, we might do some kind of since this is like a test run we might do some kind of structured collection of feedback if 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 we feel like it if we think that yeah um so yeah, that was just a bit. So uh, a recap again. Uh, so <coughs> we have a ponable race, three players solving the same ponable challenge. It's a challenge where they have to find and chain together two uh, fairly simple bugs. Uh, the trick is that it's a bit unintuitive because we will be using a bug to write into uh, a future stack frame or the the date that will appear in a future stack frame and, and trigger a bug there instead of like writing to something in the previous stack frame. Um, and so Mermis has that minus one down. Yeah, he's about to do this. That is cool. I'm checking in on the other players as well, just so that we don't miss anything. Uh, okay. So we're not writing that highest byte because we can't write an FF. Which means we can't just write a ROP chain out here. Um, Is partial railroad, so we should be able to write to the god then. Okay, so Mermus has recognized the fact that he can overwrite the railroad. Um, that's good. Uh, yep, on the way. So, which function did you overwrite in your when you did it? This, um, I don't remember, but you should be able to just use. Because what you did was using the, the one-shot gadget, so then it doesn't really matter, but you could... Um, did I do that on that one, though? I'm not even sure anymore. <laughs> uh, hold on, let me take a look. Yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's switch over and check the other ones uh, meanwhile, while Mermis is figuring that out. Um, so, we'll see if... Uh, Jay has any new progress? I'm having a little bit of a hard time reading his exploit. Uh, yeah, so he's just sending some size, which is just some regular size. Yeah. 
Yeah, he's he's in the same position essentially. Yeah, yeah. So basically, he did he did catch up, and there. But then now, Mermus has, you know, we might. I I mean, I haven't really seen it yet, but it looks like he's he's understanding what's going on. So he's he's probably possibly breaking breaking free from this this part where they all are stuck on. Right. Uh, yeah. This pwn hell. <laughs> Uh, let's look at what uh, Endeavor is doing. Still some nice tunes, uh, but no nice exploits. No IP control. That sweet IP control that we want. Um, mm. Oh, here's his playlist. Yep. Okay, he's taking a short break. So let's switch back to Mermis then. You just call system bin SH. Um, I have to jump through some poops. Um, so it looks like he's picking which function he wants. That's true, correct. Yeah. Puts, where does puts get called? Anywhere useful? Like ideally I want something that is getting called with data I control, which is not puts. Um, set so if he takes put, set. that means he might be able to control the first parameter. Oh, set. Yeah, because what you want, right, is either you go for the one-shot gadget and then it doesn't really matter, uh, but uh, or you overwrite with system, but then you need to yeah. control uh, the Why first argument. Right, and pit uh, slash bin slash sh or something. Yeah, exactly. So we got a question here from the chat. Was this challenge part of a past CTF? Nemset is going to get no. called with the eventual output. Of no, these are all original. Okay. Yeah, so... Uh, so I still don't have a libc pointer. Well, let's, let's listen to Mermis first, and then we'll talk about that. Right. Which is kind of painful. Because this um, is... I think this is the right path, but I'm going to jump up for a second, and I will be back in two minutes. Okay, so Mermis is also going for a short break. Is this where, you know, the uh, endurance part of it sets in? Persistence is key. Yeah. Um, so... Um, yeah, I was, I was worried that... Jay's stream died again, but he was just thinking. Uh, it, there was no movement. Okay, basically, yes, so uh, Bob here, my co-commentator, has created this challenge specifically for this uh, streaming event. Uh, so, uh, yeah, these are original challenges created for, for this stream. And uh, we will be releasing them uh, afterwards again, but they should be uh, they should be in the ch chat as well if you want to try it out uh, yourselves. Um, yeah, let's look at uh, look at Jay again. Let's see what he's up to since uh, he is the only one actually actively working right now. Mm. So let's see what where he is at. So yeah, I, I noticed this. So if this 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 size of forty eight, there was some kind of check related to that in the in the code or no. So so the the buffer size is uh, going to be forty, right? Okay. Which is sixty four in decimal. Yeah. And so I think what he's trying to do is overwrite the pointer using the rest of that. Uh, or maybe not. Yeah, so he's... It looks to me like that stack buffer address part is a little wrong. Because there's no way you could overwrite the whole pointer. Yeah. The best you could probably do is two bytes, but even that's with pain. So you basically get one byte. Yep. But, and, and then that's why the stack alignment thing is important, because you can only do... like. 
you do an absolute right. So then you need yes. to, to know. Um, but that that the 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 pre the future stack frame that we we hoping that they they realize they need to target. Yeah. Uh, needs to be within the same least significant byte range as the the place that they're writing. Yeah. But we've we've done a little bit of adjustment on the stack so that, that ASLR doesn't mess that up. Yeah. It's cool. So we have some activity again here from from Mermus. He's back and uh, Endeavor is back as well. So everyone is back uh, playing. Game on. Game on, indeed. Um, so yeah, this is uh, the current the current status. Um, Business end. Okay, so Mermis has picked out his function. Okay, well let's let's check check that. Um, let's unmute him. See if he has anything to say about it. Uh, yeah, he's selected a, an offset. Did you did you notice which one he he picked? Uh, I didn't, but I do know that it's not the same one I did. Yeah, I. I uh, Exactly, I don't recognize that offset either. So, interesting. So, okay. looks like it might be put char. Or uh, we successfully have PC now. That's good. Well, kind of PC. Oh, EIP controlled. Beautiful. Wow, this is good. So, we have the first player with so, IP control. Let's look at the downsides here. We have PC. But now what? I don't have a libc address. Gonna have to get a shell mate. Um, which means I can't do anything with it right now. Um, well, I can, but there's not anything stupid in here. Like, uh, pop a shell function, is there? It is. There is. Mm, no, I don't see one. Well, not not directly, um, but in, in libc there's a pop a shell function. Or, not a function, but, yeah. Yeah, he's he's so close now. It's uh, so the first thing I need to do is yeah, I need to get away. myself a I'm just to make sure here. Okay, so he has that. Let's let's leave him at that for now. But he has IP control. That's good. That's really cool. Uh, let's check in with Jay. Um. <laughs> So, I would say this is the equivalent of the chat going wild. Some air horn and hashtag Team Mermus. Is that... Uh, uh <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is why you should do it uh, stream on Twitch instead. Like, you can have uh, these uh, custom, uh, uh, custom emojis and stuff. Yeah, uh, perfect. <laughs> Maybe you can have that on YouTube as well if you get enough subscribers or something. I don't know. Help if I broke where I was meaning to on those last two attempts. Okay, so. Yeah, so let's switch over to Endeavor. He's doing something here where he is trying to use a specific. Uh, he's, he was going like how to use a specific libc. Uh, will that work? If like to just load, or will there be other things in your libc installation that breaks if you just load the? Oh, that 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 could work. Yep. I don't know, I think... Yeah, I don't know. So 
So let's see. Oh, I, I forgot to. So he's. I have a, a little bit of a hard time reading what's on his uh, screen, but it looks like he is able to run it with a co with a with a different uh, libc. Uh, we got a question in uh, in the chat. If that's Jay Little from uh, Trail of Bits, uh, and yes, it is. Uh, the man, the myth, the legend. No, I actually have, oh, I forgot about that. I have proper presentations uh, about the players. Oh yeah, the little intros. Yeah. So uh, as, a, as a recap, uh, we have uh, Jay Little and he says that Jay Little is a security researcher at Trail of Bits. Jay has over 10 years experience making types and structures in IDA Pro. And then, unfortunately, Gynophage was a no-show. And then we have uh, Alex Eubanks, a.k.a. Endeavor. Alex Eubanks is a program manager at For All Secure, where he spends most of his time balancing spreadsheets, writing up reports and proposals, and scheduling customer meetings. Also, he's hiring. Um, finally, we have... No, we don't have... Uh, we were supposed to have... Uh, Ryan Stortz, uh, but uh, unfortunately he's not feeling uh, well today, so send your uh, love to him. And instead we got uh, a late uh, substitution and got uh, Mermis instead, uh, which is pretty cool, I think. The Mermis. Yeah, the Mermis. I, I don't think further introduction is required, and that's fortunate because I don't have any. Um All right, speaking of which, it looks like he's pitting all the pieces together. Yeah. So, he the is countdown has begun. abstracting this into a nice set PC function. So, just encapsulating this. And this is also something that's, you know, really nice when you're building your exploits. Like, you, you find these, like, basic building blocks, your primitives, and you abstract them into your functions in your exploit. And... Uh, you know, you hide away all the nasty memory corruption stuff and you're left with okay. uh, something that looks pretty beautiful. Hopefully. I, I especially love it when you do like a complex ROP chain uh, and you yeah. have all these like functions for all your gadgets and parameters and uh, yeah, it can result in a fairly, um, fairly nice uh, exploit code. Yeah. So, yeah, the, you, the, Overflow. the tension. Oh, yeah, so he is now putting in the, the rot thing uh, to make it completely stable. And as you said, it's probably not necessary. But right. if you put it in, you're sure that it's not going to cause a problem. Absolutely. And so obviously, this will be used for the final value that ends up in the uh, global offset table. Yep. And yeah, I didn't. Uh, let's see that offset ends with five two zero four zero. Let's see if I can do a quick ob dump and see uh, if we maybe put char maybe. Something like that. Yeah. What do you say? Five two zero four zero. Mm, yep. Well, he uh, he's getting there. Uh, so he's taking the address he wants to jump to, rot13, transforming it, putting it into the payload. Uh, so so he, he he has IP control. Six five eight five one. Continue. Aha. Okay. So, so that is Memset. Oh yeah, 
I see. Is going to be 805 200C. So would that work? Memset is called with your original buffer. Right. So the first argument that he's working with there yeah. would be... Uh, I don't remember. Is it the buffer first? Yeah, it is. Yeah, isn't it like destination value yeah, yeah. length? Exactly. So that's a perfect uh, method to use right? for system. Yeah, it should be super stable then. Just uh, start your buffer with like bin sh uh, okay. and a comment or something. Uh, exactly. Okay, cool. Well, let's check in on the others. Uh, how's Jay doing? Is a lot of error messages on his screen. So having some some issues with the on oh, debug or something. Yeah. Oh, uh, I um. What? Awesome. Wait. What's awesome? Fill us in. What's going on over there? <laughs> yeah. So I I I I uh, made this discovery that um. Pwn debug uses so when I usually do this, I usually set up a SoCat with port uh, like three one three three seven. Right. And I discovered that Pwn debug uses this for the like IDA integration. Uh, so right. I got super strange behaviors when I was doing that. Uh, it took a while to figure out. Uh, so I had to change my default SoCat uh, port or like the, the script that I'm using. I mean, that's the problem with these tools, isn't it? Like they, they make your life so easy sometimes, but sometimes they just screw your life up. Yeah. But that's the thing with abstractions in general. Like yeah. when they work, it's awesome. But Magic. When, when there's something wrong, it can take you a long time before you start questioning the lower levels. Like, before you pop the hood of the abstraction. Exactly. So now it looks like Mermus is doing some format string stuff. How Interesting. did that happen? Wow. Okay. Looks like we have an unintended solve on the way. But how would... Hmm. How would that is he overwriting memset with printf? Why would he do that? Can't he just overwrite memset with system instead? Yeah, hundred percent. That's actually I mean, if it works, it works. Yeah, but I, I'm just, I'm just trying to follow his uh, his reasoning here. But I mean, because I mean, surely he knows that he can overwrite. He can use. He doesn't have to use a function that's that's in the that's in the got. Like he could just go directly for. Right, but he might be trying to just look at what's on the stack at that exact call at that time so he knows what's available to him yeah yeah well i mean if, if he has a stable print f with full control that will also work it's just an unnecessary detour uh right but then again, I mean, sometimes you do these things just to make sure that you have, you know, you, the full control, and and so. Oh yeah, so he 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 wants to use it to leak the the libc base. Yeah. Oh yeah, because right. you did that in an okay yeah of course, uh, right, I was. So there's a leak that you could have got at the beginning, 
but it doesn't seem like he did, so he's using this roundabout way in order to solve that problem. Oh, but that's actually, that's actually that's actually very clever, I think. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. Where where would you get the this? Oh, <laughs> now he's in the same position I was in, uh, or like when I did his challenge uh, with the uh, not being able to get the uh, the libc uh, address. Um, okay. So how would you get the the libc base from what's what's on the stack that's related to? Uh, well, the the you know main always returns to libc start main, which is in the libc itself. So if he just oh, yeah. pops down yep. it far enough, he's good. Yeah. Also, since he controls stuff on the stack, right? He could also do an indirect read from the got. Yep. Um, okay, yeah, uh. so let's leave him with that then uh, for a moment. Let's check in on uh, Endeavor. How's he doing? Yeah, that's a lot of stuff. Is this some, wait, what is it printing out? Backtrace. Yeah. Yeah, as Joel p pointed out in the in the chat, the libc start main, as you said as well, Bob, uh, that works um, to to get the libc base from 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 the stack. Um, yeah, one of my favorites. Yep. Um, well, there was like a what I would describe as a shriek of terror outside my house somewhere interesting uh anyway <laughs> sorry about that uh so what's going on here with um, endeavor stream is that the the backtrace that he's yeah so he's completely corrupted other things beyond so he's written through the buffer hit the pointer jumped a little bit and then he just keeps writing on and on and on so obviously the backtrace won't work. It'll just be a bunch of 41s, 44s, I guess. Yeah. Someone said uh, if you could repeat the, the libc start method. So in the beginning of your your program, you have your, your entry point, the start function. What that will do is it will call the libc start was called libc start main right yeah, function yeah. with your actual main function as a pointer with as one of the arguments so it will first call into libc then it will call your main function and that means the um, saved instruction pointer the return address on one of the return addresses on the stack will point into the libc start main uh, function which is inside the libc um, library so right if you leak it's just it's the function that sets up the argv and the, the nvp and all that sort of stuff yeah so by leaking the part of the stack you get that address you use the uh the offset which you then get from from the libc that's shipped with the uh, with the binary you can then subtract that get the libc base and from there you can calculate all the functions in uh libc but it does need to be said that there is another way to leak, which is that the buffer, the first time, is just overwriting uh, uninitialized memory. So you could probably just send some characters without a new line, and you'll you'll get some uninitialized memory. Yeah. So and that was the intended, or like the way you did the leak. Right. But right. this is an absolutely valid way yeah, of doing 100%. it. Yeah. So we still have J A F K. J F K. Uh yeah, sorry. Um and uh yeah, let's look check back with Mermus. That's uh So looking at this exploit code it no, seems no. that He's <laughs> uh, he's losing it. 
If it helps, I'm not thrilled with the way I'm exploiting this. Yeah. It's pretty messy. So Endeavor just wrote in in in, in the chat that uh, <laughs> please, dear Lord, can we make it stop? And uh, well, hope As it should be. Hopefully, hopefully, Mermus will be serving a flag soon. Uh, and some some yeah so someone is asking what's the goal uh, the shell yeah so for people I mean, yeah i had to have a leak well let's uh, let's check what mermis is saying first and then we'll get to that now he's checking the stream a bastard <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we we can see this. We can see this, Mermis. <laughs> oh no, where's the flag? Uh, anyway, as I was saying, uh, uh, for those new to these kinds of challenges, so opponable like binary exploitation, where do I go for flag? Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, so for those uh, who missed it, players, the the remote server in the in the tar archive, <laughs> there is a connect connect dot sh uh, which contains the server and the port. So uh, that was what he was looking for. Right. <laughs> so he's he's. Uh, yeah, that's now shown on stream. So now people will start do uh, uh, dosing it. Hopefully yep. not. So, will, will it work? Now it's the moment of truth. Here we go. I can hear you. First ever pony race. Oh, I have to actually fix my exploit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so he's not quite there yet. It's very close. Uh, no, it's. I just have to change pointers around. I'm relying on my libc. Is he listening to the stream right now? It's a bit confusing because there's all, all of these del delays in this setup. Uh, yeah, I have no idea, to be honest. Yeah, I think we should, we, sh we should... Uh, That's up. We should look into that. I mean, what you would have... What you would like to have is like a... I want all players on the same... You know, aligned in time but you know, oh, control of what we're listening to and who is talking to who, like a, a full mixer table, a mixer, uh, like a soundboard. Uh, yeah, I wonder if there's any way of doing that like virtually. Um, anyway, uh, I'm wondering now, should we, we do a ch quick check in on the others before, or is he? Is Why is it just a new line? It looks like the league's different on the remote server. Uh. So, <laughs> do we have a... Stop typing. Now he's typing furiously. Why are we... Okay. Yeah, so we did test the setup last night. It was like 2 a.m., but it did work. Uh, so, oh, oh, is that? It's so painfully slow now. Okay, I get a pointer. Is it, is it happening, Bob? Is it happening? Uh, he's just changing the leak. I just checked. It works remotely, so we're good. Okay, cool. 
Yeah, so once he configures this, it's done. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's let's do a quick checking with the others and uh, and then come back to Mermus, hopefully before he pops the flag. So uh, let's see. Where is Jay at? He there's no major progress here, right? Uh, no, he's got all the pieces. He's still not messing with the so, size yeah. of the allocation. Yeah. So same place, more or less. That's cool. Let's switch back to Mermis now. Let's see if things are happening here. Okay. Yeah. Now so, we got this. What I got when I had the wrong stuff. So that. What did we set fault here? That. Promising. Yeah. That script, the slash home slash ctf slash reader dot sh. This other point. That's part of the. Uh, we printed this out. That's like the, the entry point for so the uh, xinetd um, service, which launches the the challenge binary. So, like he is, mm, so close. Is he using the right libc? Do we know that? I have no idea. That looks like it should be correct. Looks like. Yeah, but he's like he's, he's so close. Um, well, sh let's check in with Endeavor. Um, seems to be not doing that much at all. Uh, no, no, he's. Getting stuff done. Um, I'm so I'm just I, I I want to comment on on what the other people are doing, but I'm I'm so thrilled to see if Mermus will land this. Oh, did it? Did he just do it? Oh no! Did he? We're going to do this many times. Oh, he's just doing a new dump, so we can see what's on the stack. Yeah. Just okay. fixing the leak and then it's game over. Yeah. And we connect. It's a bit slow. Yes, continue. Size one. Uh, this. Go. Okay. Um, oh, you know what? Yes, one. There we go. Many A's, then this. I hate you so much right now. <laughs> Yeah, but he's. You know, I didn't realize that. I didn't realize that the entire time I was saying things. No, to you guys. Yeah, it's, it's every time I control C something. Oh yes, <laughs> so all the other the participants are in the same TeamSpeak channel, and apparently uh, Mermus has a push to talk on C, so he is occasionally talking to the other players. <laughs> Might be leaking some some hints to them that way. Okay, anyway, okay. let's uh, let's uh, let's let I him. I want to that offer to you. I want you to know that I'm here for you to help and assist. <laughs> Oh wow, I've been doing this for a couple hours now. I'm, I'm guessing that you're not interested in that offer at this time. I think I'm good. Okay, just check. I'm still streaming, I forgot. Okay, the star thing suppresses the input. Should have remembered that.
So let's go back through her stuff. Leak stack buffer address. Yeah, uh, so done on that one. So Jay is still onto this so, uh, return overwrite return address idea, is, uh, which is a dead end. Yeah, completely. That's yeah. unfortunate. Um, so let's let's check in with the Endeavor. Um, Oh yeah, so comment in, in chat is that Mermus is still subtracting the same static offset from the runtime lib. So yeah, so he has the wrong uh wrong lib the uh libc start yeah, main offset. offset. Is right. is that what he's missing? I think so, yeah. I'm not sure what he's leaking though, to be honest. Mm. Well me neither. Like did he I guess that he verified that this worked locally, right? I just we just missed that part. I suppose, yeah. I mean, he had all the parts, so I can't imagine he didn't. No, I mean, he must have tried it locally. Right. Uh. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is the way it goes, though, isn't it? Like, yep. you you always fuck about at the end. Yeah. Like some little offset or some buffer or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Like you, you, you forgot to change this one into a remote thing, and then if you're if you're unlucky, this throws you, you know, on some t totally unrelated uh, track. Yeah, that's that's pretty much how it goes for me. All right, so it looks like Endeavor's using that pointer to jump a little gap, and then just writing, just carrying on writing down the stack. Oh, so he's instead of Oh wait, that's that's the correct direction he should be going or No, that's the opposite direction. So he's doing the intuitive thing, which is hey, let me just go higher up on the stack memory. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. But he needs to go backwards. Yep. So yeah, now it's maybe the time to talk about. So uh, what I was uh, tr uh, starting to explain previously was about ponables for those uh, <laughs> who are new. So basically, you have these uh, compiled programs with machine code. So you get the copy locally, and the same program okay. is running on the remote server. I don't know if you guys can hear me. We can hear you. But Sam, apparently, is super close to laminus thing. He's telling us in team speak. It's driving me crazy. Gosh darn it, Sam. Gosh darn it. Can't even think anymore. Man. So close. Uh, yeah, so the same program is running remote. You use the local version of the program to develop an exploit for it. You connect the remote server. You run the exploit. You take control of it to get a, ch uh, a shell. And then on the server, there is a text file containing the flag to prove that you managed to do this. So that's basically how it goes. Absolutely. And uh, Mermus has managed to get his exploit working locally on his machine. Uh, but he's making some very, very, very small mistakes causing it to not work on the remote machine and thus not getting the flag. Uh, so he just have to sort out those things and um, he should have it, but we'll see if the others can, you know, make a miraculous comeback. Yeah, that's the thing about debugging remotely, you know, it's it's a bit of a black hole sometimes. Yeah, literally. It's like you have no idea what's going on unless you have I mean, in some cases you have some 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 challenge, some binaries are um, you know, they 
tell you more about what's going on so you can get a better sense of exactly what's not working right but sometimes it's very difficult yeah a lot of inference and logic might be needed but actually Mermis had a really good technique by using prince f he has a little more control than he'd usually have yep which really helps with the debugging obviously oh that's really cool like to get some foothold by getting the print f function which is a super like if you have a full control fully controlled print f that's a enormously powerful primitive right you you can read he can write it's it's everything he needs yeah you can copy stuff which i learned recently ah, yeah. <laughs> so now he's uh so let's let's right. back here so to Mermis. Uh, we have called get car though I mean I hope they understand that the libc that I gave to them is the one running on the yeah I mean that's standard isn't it yeah it looks like it's picking out a different address and using a database to find the exact version of the libc which obviously just uses the lo the least three significant nibbles in the address in order to determine what yeah. libc it belongs to and that's the one Someone asked, how do you copy stuff with printf? Uh, so, okay. let's see what Mermis is saying here, and then we can explain that one. So, now he's taking their leaked printf address, subtracting the offset of printf, that will give you the libc base, and then adding the system offset, which should give you an pointer. Uh, to do system yeah right yes so someone said does he not know that he has libc i'm not sure i i am tempted to uh tell him but i'm also curious uh -huh. to certainly educational oh he's got it uh -huh. he's got it so murmur's got the flag guys there we go congratulations to me <laughs> yeah uh, so let's get everyone in here. Uh, user was moved to your channel. User was moved to your channel. User was moved, was moved to, your to your channel. Hello. Hello. I have questions. Jeez. Hello. Hello. Answers. All right. I'll be quiet. Uh, uh, I just think that I they have some, kind, have of some kind of here. echo here. One moment. Microphone activated. It was probably me. I'll turn my microphone off. But if we have, but I'd love to hear from Mermis how he solved this, and I'd love to know whether or not he controlled. I'd love to know uh, EBP minus hex thirty in the right. And if so, how he did it? The answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mermis, how? How did you do it, Sam? Please let us know. So, Mermus, you want to uh, do a short explanation of... Uh, I, I will put your screen on, on the stream, uh, and you can uh, do a short explanation of uh, what was going on. Okay, so I guess the easy... Does it make sense to actually talk over TeamSpeak or just talk normally? Uh, let's mute your microphone here on TeamSpeak uh, and just... I, I will put your stream sound on and that way everything will be in sync while you talk. So if Endeavor and Jay wants to listen, you should p take out the stream and unmute it to listen uh, to it that way. And you should, Mermis should be muted here. On, I think that's the best way to get the sounds working correctly. Okay. Sounds good to me. So I guess the uh, quick explanation here is the first of the bugs that I sat on for quite a while is we have so we have this function which is going to read in one byte at a time and it's going to or it's down here it's going to read in a byte uh, let's read it this way it'll read in a byte and it's going to save it off to a stack address every time it doesn't validate anything 
the catch is is that this will eventually run over and it will actually overwrite its own pointer. So this var18 is at uh, EBP minus 14 hex. So it starts at 54 minus 54. So after you've written 40 hex bytes, it'll actually overwrite itself. Or it'll write it'll overwrite the pointer that it's going to write to. So in order to do anything, we take this, and if we look at the exploit I ended up with, so we're going to write, uh, what do we have here? I have a chain, which is going to be, so I've set up this function that will give me arbitrary PC. Uh, we're going to write 40 bytes, and then a null byte, and then this find string. So what this is doing is it's making it so that we're going to write 40 hex bytes, which gets us outside of this. Then we're going to write zero, which is going to go over the low byte of the next thing we're going to write. Then in here, we're going to jump back up. So we've now written over those bytes. We've now jumped back ahead of us, and we're going to start bashing other things in place, which we set to be find. Find is just uh, some strings here and then whatever pointer we want to change it to be. And the way I've set all of this up, uh, we have a write pointer, which is actually then going to... That's the pointer that Endeavor was talking about. Uh, because in the rot13 function, if argument 2 uh, to the function is 0, it never initializes what it writes to. So it's just going to use whatever was on the stack previously and argument two is a malloc. So what we end up doing is we actually try and malloc negative one bytes, which is of course going to fail. And that makes malloc return zero, which means that's never initialized. So whatever was on the stack previously is gonna end up there. And because we did this like wraparound thing, we're actually writing into what was there with our regular send bytes in. So as far as the exploit goes, we've got this function, which does all the heavy lifting. We the first time around we set PC to be this, which sets uh, this sets memset to printf uh, because down here they memset uh, your buffer to start over again. We've now changed that memset to instead be printf, which lets us write read and write arbitrary stuff. So the first time around we leak out. What do we leak out this first time? Oh, the first time around we le leak out a libc pointer. Um, it's supposed to be something useful because on my system, I calculated the offset uh, between, I think it's standard in or standard out. It's one of the two, which is in the libc data section. I calculated the offset. We then try and jump into it. It fails because the remote libc is different. So all of this code then is to calculate a arbitrary pointer. Uh, we then just dump the got. We get the printf address and the get car address. Oh. And I then used, oh, I closed it. Oh, I can't find it. And now my sound is awful. Um, then I just used the libcdb uh, to calculate what system would be. And we jumped to it. And that's it. And it works. It does things. That's awesome. So, yay. Congratulations. I don't know if anybody has any questions. No, I think. Uh, but I can try and answer them. Yeah. So, uh, Mermis, if you switch uh, back to the TeamSpeak, uh, so we can have a real time uh, conversation here between everyone. Um. Okay, I'm now muted on stream. Sure. Uh... Awesome. Uh, so yeah. No, so thanks. So thanks. Yeah, endeavor. Yeah, thanks everyone for uh, participating. I hope you had fun. I think this was uh, fun. I hope people who were watching um, had fun and learned something. Uh, and uh, congratulations to Mermis again for winning the first uh like first instance of this 
uh, thing that we're doing, this ponable race. So uh, hopefully this was a good enough of an idea to try this uh, again. And uh, we uh, appreciate your, your feedback from like both players and, and uh, watchers and, and uh, our viewers. And if anyone is interested in participating in a future episode of this, uh, then uh, yeah, please uh, let us know. I don't know if we do have any questions from uh, from the uh, chat or uh, anything like that that we could take here. Uh, Endeavor Jay, do you have any any comments or feedback or? I have a question for for Mermit. So I so in Malik, my Malik was overriding uh, on the stack where my pointer was in the function. Maybe I, maybe it was just I couldn't get the DDB to load in the right Malik. But um, yeah. So if you go back to that, when you that EVP minus hex thirty, I think it was my Malik was uh, my, that call to Malik was overriding that value, so I wasn't able to set it. Would, did I miss something, or was I just maybe using the wrong libc? What were you malicking? Uh, zero? Or no, no, no. I set it to like a really, really, really high number. So like FD, 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 FD. That does not work. It has to be a negative number, is what I found. FD, 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 FD would be a negative. Would no, it's not. A negative number. No, you don't. No. It has to be over eight, eight, like eight zero and above. This would be negative. But it is FD. FD, 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 Oh, FD. FD. Yeah, sorry. I don't know what you heard. So for whatever reason, uh, I found that... So how are you sending it to FD? Um, so I have... Let's see. So I would write... So I would write the 40 characters, and then I would set the um, least significant byte of the of the pointer on the stack that is the pointer to the array that you're getting your get characters into, I would set that to the location um, of, I called it n size, the, the location of that size variable. And then I would write FD, 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 FD over it to set it to a negative number. Yeah, so I, I was doing that for a little bit and I saw the same thing where it would fail. Uh, what I ended up doing was instead just overwriting where it would be on the stack. I write there and I don't touch that and I just set it to be negative one because negative one is a valid value for it. Uh, whatever is going on, I saw the exact same behavior uh, where that would happen. And by just not touching, I, I made my write smaller. I'm only writing 12 bytes after the skip, I think. Yeah, And that what, fixed I, it. I got it. I'll go back and look. I'll go back and watch your stream. That's cool. Uh, we had a question. Uh, Mermus, did you know that the libs, the remote libc was provided? I did not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I should have actually looked in the tarball, shouldn't I have? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yes. Uh, <laughs> both, um, both for the connect uh, script and... Uh, I I might I maybe I should have been a little bit more clear with that as well, but uh, no, it's I, all good. I, I was wondering like what the hell are you doing like bringing out the stream like what is this some kind of cheating going on right now or what what's going on? Yeah, uh, I just saw binary and I started trying to reverse it. Oh, uh, I see. Uh, yeah, I mean that's uh, that's the gut reaction, right? Bob, any uh, closing comments from you? No, no, I'm I'm all good. Well done, guys. It was good. Cool. Yeah, I think it was super fun. Um, thank you very much. Uh, and thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, the stream is recorded. So I guess uh, as soon as I close this down, it will be available in a f a very soon. And uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's hope we're doing this uh, again. Uh, goodbye, everyone. And if everyone. people want to participate, yep. how do they do that? So I think... The easiest way is just send me a message on Twitter, at Cita2, uh, with, you know, comments, feedbacks, uh, requests for participation, uh, whatever. My DMs are open, so just uh, contact me there and we'll take it from there. Uh, yeah, so thanks everyone and goodbye.